Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. And hello, hello, and welcome to Arrows Coaching. This is where sexuality, uh, Arrows Evolution, this is where sexuality and spirituality meets. And my company is called Arrows Coaching. That's E-R-O-S-Coaching.com. So I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, and my company is called Arrows Coaching. I work with uh, couples and individuals who have any kinds of uh, issues, concerns, questions relating to their sexuality and I actually met our guest today, Tisha Morgan, at um, my school, the Institute for Advanced Study of Human Sexuality. And uh, today, the show is going to be titled, Heads Up, Beyond the Blowjob. And we're talking about blowjobs today. So today's uh, show is going to be in-depth about how to increase your sexual confidence, expand your sexual repertoire, and get the real lowdown on oral sex with Tisha Morgan. She's a sex therapist and couples counsellor. In this talk, we'll discuss communication strategies surrounding oral sex and different myths and misconceptions about fellatio, as well as tips and techniques that aren't well known but are sure fire ways to ignite new forms of pleasure for both the giver and receiver. And uh, the title of today's show is, of course, also the title of her book by the same uh, name, Hits Up Beyond the Blowjob, and you definitely want to check it out. I have uh, read it and done a review of it in my on my website, and you can find it by doing a quick Google, that's uh, Arrows Coaching, Hits Up Review, and you will be able to find it very quickly. Okay, so let me uh, talk a little bit about uh, more about our guest. Uh, so Morgan... Um, Tisha Morgan, she is um, the co-founder of Westline Acad Academy. Acad sorry, Westline Academy of Clinical Sex Therapy, and she's a clinical counselor, sex therapist, and a co-founder. And uh, she actually wrote this book with her co-founder, and uh, uh, Constance Lynn Hamel. So they have this full-time practice that's located located in Vancouver, Canada. So she and her partner, they both work with individuals and couples of different ages, genders, and sexual orientations with the goal of creating an honest, welcoming, and dare we say fun way for individuals to explore this crazy thing we call sex. And uh, you might like to already check out her website. That's tishamorgan.com, one word, and hitsupbook.com. So welcome to the show, Tisha. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. So there are many, many things that uh, we do in our work as uh, clinical sexologists uh, and uh, for you, uh, uh, clinical counselor, sex therapist. So what? Uh, tell us a little bit why you decided to write a book on this topic. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we often get that question a lot, as well as how did we do our research, and people usually give us a slide smile as they ask. Mm -hmm. um, in general, uh, like you said, I work with a lot of couples and individuals with um, sexuality-based um, issues or dysfunctions, um, or just questions, concerns, and education around it as well. And um, what I was finding, and my colleague, um, Constance Lynn Hummel, was that oftentimes people would have questions around, let's say, oral sex, fellatio, blowjobs, whatever you want to call it, uh, and we really didn't feel like we had good resources to give them. Uh, we felt like the resources were either very clinical, kind of like a Masters and Johnson kind of um, something that maybe your parents or grandparents would have read, or something on the other side of the pendulum swing kind of spectrum where it was very kind of uh, liberal and raw and out there for a lot of people and maybe they didn't feel comfortable reading. So we wanted really to create a resource that um, was somewhat in between those two. So it combined um, education and wittiness and a light read with some tips and techniques while at the same time um, providing a therapeutic edge to it, um, which we hadn't found in any other resources out there. So the therapeutic 
side would be more, you know, do you have hangups around oral sex, how to talk to your partner around um, oral sex or, you know, your discomfort with it, maybe some typical ask questions, things like that. So we really tried to combine facts and um, a therapeutic component into one book. So um, that's why we decided to tackle this endeavor. And uh, how did you guys uh, go about doing your research? (laughs) All <laughs> right, the second component to that. Um, well, it was really uh, quite a long process. We thought in general it would take us maybe a year, how naive we were to begin with. Um, but it was about a four or five year um, stint it took us to write this because we really spent years doing research. Um, first of all, we started with um, going right to the scientific literature. So anything we could find that was written, tested, peer-reviewed about um, oral sex and sex um, in general. Then we went to you know larger reads, um, so more of the therapeutic edge. And then we started doing focus groups. So we would bring um, a bunch of ladies together, maybe 15 ladies in a room, and maybe have a glass of wine. And then we would talk about what their experiences were, what their hang-ups were, what their myths and misconceptions were, what they liked and didn't like, those sorts of things. Um, And then we did a focus group with just all men, heterosexual men. And then we did a focus group with um, with um, gay males. So we were really trying to get kind of as many aspects of this from as many different points of view as we could mm-hmm. and um, put that knowledge into the book as well. Um, so a lot of it was science-based and a lot of it was, um, yeah, like I said, the, um, the focus groups from what we heard people saying and feeling and thinking. Mm, and then the writing. <laughs> and then the writing came along, yes, after that. So it was quite the long process. Yeah, wow. For five years, that's dedication. Amazing. Yes, dedication and lots of books on oral sex we read. I think we tried to read everything we possibly could out there that was already written to make sure that our book could encompass all of that and more. So lots of reading. Yeah, I I really like uh, your book, uh, which I I wrote about, uh, did a book review. And uh, the the thing that I liked about it was the tone, that it was fun, it was friendly. And there were all these uh, trivia that were peppered around it. And it really made you appreciate um, the subject matter. Also, I, I really appreciate, like, at the end, it talks about communication. And that's so important. It really eased people into it, I, I felt. So that, that's a really a good job. Thank you. What's the, what's the response that you're getting from this book so far? Um, so far, it's been really good. Um, like you said, a lot of people um, will gravitate towards the book because they thought, oh, well, maybe this will teach me a thing or two that I didn't know, and then will be happy or surprised um, that there is the talk about communication and those sorts of things to the book. So mm-hmm. we've gotten good feedback on that side. And we tried to, like you said, we tried to make it kind of light and witty and funny and put random facts throughout that maybe people did or didn't want to know, but um, who knew, kind of make you smile. Um, so, yeah, so far we're getting good feedback on that as well. Mm, yeah, great. It's a, it's a little bit of everything. And um, there, there were other things also which uh, is uh, there for advanced learner, like prostate massage and anal play. And uh, a really, really uh, well thought out book. And um, I wouldn't have known uh, that it took so much effort, and um, that's the reason why it was a well thought out book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's it's really good. You guys had a commonly asked questions there as well, and uh, also covered sexual anatomy, and um, had uh, some illustrations about positions. So um, I would say that uh, every everybody would be able to get something from it, even even if they think they know a lot. I certainly learned some things uh, from that book. And oh, well, thank you. That means a lot coming from uh, coming from you. So thank I, you. I really did things that uh, I thought. Oh yeah, you know, I sh- I should include uh, these kinds of topics in my workshops because I I do run a, a hand job blow job workshop that uh, I combined, and uh, now I'm thinking of separating them again because there's just so much information. And uh, we need to give uh, people time to learn uh, and absorb the messages, especially if they're learning it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So Definitely. We're, we're going to go for a break very soon. But uh, I just wanted to ask uh, quickly, what is one uh, surprising fact that you learned uh, while writing this book? Hmm. That is a great question. Um, 
I guess my surprising facts really didn't have a lot to do with um, humans. When we were doing our research, like you say, we put fun facts throughout. Mm. So, like, for instance, the echidna, which is an animal that kind of looks like a hedgehog and an anteater kind of mixed, um, it has a four-headed penis. So um, the male echidna, when it has sex with its female, um, one side of the penis kind of just shuts down, um, leaving two of the other four heads in use. Um, but the heads on the one side of the, or sorry, the female echidna's reproductive tract actually has two canals. So therefore all four penises can't, or heads of the penis can't be active at once, but they still grow in size, but two of them are actually active. So anyway, I just found that really interesting. So mostly the animal facts, just like the fruit bat. Um, if we look at fruit bats and their kind of um, sexual activity, it shows that if a male fruit bat spends some time on oral sex with a female fruit bat and actually like licking the genitals and vice versa, if the female t spends some time licking the male's genitals of the fruit bat, um, the sex is actually longer um, between the two of them as well. So um, I guess my um, enlightened moments were usually about outside the animal kingdom that I had no idea that they were playing with or doing um, was my kind of interesting parts of the book. That's great. That's really awesome that uh, you did all those research and you put it into the book. Even though uh, people will wonder, maybe may wonder why uh, you did <laughs> that, but I really think it, it normalizes oral sex because people, uh, some of my clients, they say things like it's it's abnormal or it's uh, are you sure it's natural. And uh, animals do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you could say, you know, fruit bats do it as well. It's completely natural. Yeah, precisely. And this really makes uh, everything just out in the open and it's natural. It's part of our sexuality. And, uh, you know, we can learn from animals. And uh, we, we tend to overthink too much and analyze too much. And then we, we find it hard to just relax and have fun. Agreed. So really good, really good uh, uh, nuggets that you put inside. Okay, so we have a short break and uh, we'll come back and we'll talk more about what you can do beyond the blowjob. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. And welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. This is where sex and spirit meets. And uh, you're listening to this show on On Times Radio Network. And you can actually go to this link and you'll be able to listen to the show without needing to download anything. And the link is ontimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you'll be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. And uh, it's really easy and convenient. Today, we're talking about the blowjob and uh, definitely more, more, more than that. And uh, we're already beginning to talk about um, the book 
And so I want to uh, find out a little bit like uh, from you, Tisha, who, who is this book for and uh, who would benefit the most from reading it? Um, I, you know, I usually say everyone, which I know sounds like a very broad answer because usually we like to say that you have a niche market who would really benefit the most from the book. Um, but we really tried to write it from a place where even if you have never given one before and are very overwhelmed with the process, or if you feel like you're an expert and you think, ha, huh, I'm sure you have nothing left to teach me that I don't already know, I feel like both um, categories or groups are still going to get something from the book. Um, and when we had our book launch party here in Vancouver, um, we had a very diverse group of people, um, including um, a, a lot of people in their 60s, actually, in 70s. And they were speaking about how amazing the book was, as well as some you know, younger people that were just you know, 19 and um, entering the scene. So uh, I, I would like to say everyone, male, female, gay, straight, trans as well. We very much wrote this from a sex positive non-heteronormative perspective, or we tried to as, as best as we could, um, meaning that you don't have to be a straight um, female in order to read and gain information from this book. It really can be used and gained from anybody that um, is performing oral sex, regardless of who you are, your background, or your sexual orientation. Mm, that's, that's fantastic that you guys were able to put that into consideration and write a book from there, um, because I've, I've written two books and I know it's so difficult to uh, get the languaging right and, um, uh, you know, not uh, slip up on that. So that that would have been challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we very much wanted it to be a sex-positive, inclusive book and not come from a heteronormative place because um, we felt that was very important. And we had lots of clients that weren't just straight giving, you know, heteronorm sex or oral sex. So we really wanted to include everyone in this book. Mm, that's great. So let's uh, talk a little bit, uh, uh, mention quickly, uh, how can people get a copy of your book? Um, they can go to our website. It's uh, headsup.com. And on the website, we have different links depending on maybe what country you might be living in um, to help direct you to, let's say, an Amazon page where you can purchase the book and have it mailed to you. Mm, great. And um, that's uh, headsupbook.com. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk uh, the, uh, the juicy parts around uh, some uh, myths and misconceptions around uh, fellatio. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there are people who are listening to this who may not be very comfortable about it. I think we already uh, mentioned that it is something that's natural. Mm -hmm. It is very natural. And um, you're right. I think a lot of people do have misconceptions around um, oral sex in general, not just, you know, um, how common it is or if it's abnormal, but just the questions surrounding oral sex. So, um, for instance, a lot of people will say, you know, if my partner doesn't ejaculate, does that mean that they didn't have an orgasm or they're not enjoying themselves? I mean, often, obviously, first step is effective communication. So talking with your partner around how they feel, how it makes you feel, um, talking about expectations or goals of a sexual encounter, if there is some, and um, how that's affecting your enjoyment of it. So obviously those need to be kind of first in the forefront. But yeah, really just because somebody is not ejaculating, for instance, doesn't mean that the oral sex isn't good and doesn't mean that they didn't have an orgasm. They can very much have an orgasm without ejaculation as well. So really, like when we talk about myths and misconceptions, um, and in the book there's a section on it, it's like, it's talking about those specific things and answering those questions to help normalize um, and, and relinquish some of those. Okay. So one of the uh, myths and misconceptions you mentioned is the need to have an orgasm and the, the, the need to ejaculate. Mm -hmm. The need that that has to be the conclusion of oral sex. Mm -hmm. That um, if ejaculation doesn't um, happen, then oral sex wasn't successful or not as good or, you know, those sorts of things. So it's really kind of looking at expectations and goals that one might have, you, yourself, or your partner, and then saying, am I trying to reach that goal um, versus am I just being present and enjoying the experience and the connection with my partner um, versus trying to reach a goal such as ejaculation, for instance. Mm, yeah, that's so important to talk about. Okay, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, this social comparison theory. What what is it, and how how does it apply to oral sex? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. So, social comparison theory, in a nutshell, is um, if we are looking at other people's lives, 
um, our friends, our neighbors, our family, um, those around us in our community. And we feel like in comparison, we are at the same level as them or doing better than them. Um, then we tend to report being happier. Now, if we compare ourselves to these individuals um, and we feel that we are lesser than or doing worse than them, then we tend to report that we are unhappy. So now this is a broad overarching theory that can go in many um, ways, such as you know how much money we're making and the size of we, the house we live in, um, to what we're doing inside the bedroom. So um, really looking at research um, saying, well, if you think that your friends or family or community um, are having sex, you know, five times a week and having oral sex, you know, three or four times a week, um, and you're only doing it once a month, then you report that your sex life um, isn't as great and you are more unhappy with it. Um, and now, if we flip those tables and we say, okay, you're only having oral sex, let's say, once a month, but you feel like everyone else is only doing it once a year, then you will report that you are happier and have a, have a overall, let's say, good sex life. So really, it's looking at taking out the quantity or the numbers and the comparison factor and really getting in touch with yourself and saying, how happy are you um, in general? How satisfied are you with the quality and quantity of um, what's happening behind closed doors? So in your bedroom um, versus thinking, well, I just have to do more than or better than everybody else. So it's really taking that time to check in and have some introspection of where that sits with you versus just comparing. And that, again, obviously works with the oral sex and the amount of sex we're having. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's uh, really less about what is the reality and more what you feel is happening with other people. And we really have no idea what's happening with other people because a lot of people don't talk about sex. And we uh, may come across statistics uh, in the media, but I feel a lot of times it's, it's kind of like uh, the red Ferrari syndrome. We just look out for things that makes you feel... Uh, be better or worse depending on uh, your state of mind <laughs> definitely so, yeah so the, so it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy if you already have a negative attitude about sex and you say I suck then you probably draw uh, draw uh, in information into your life that goes to show that yeah you're not good and then you start feeling really bad about yourself Definitely, yes. It's like we, we attract what we put out. And like you say, you know, if you're feeding the negative thoughts or about self or behaviors, then often that is what will highlight in our lives, whether it's what we're searching online or what we're hearing from somebody. So the state of mind, obviously, a massive um, part of it. And the perceived notion of what we think we know happens or, you know, people's Facebook feed, for instance, of, you know, it's their highlight reel of their life versus what's actually happening. Just like inside the bedroom, often people either won't talk about it and they'll hide or they'll shrug and you know um, and won't be open and authentic with what they're dealing with or struggling with or how it makes them feel um, or they're you know it's like a fishing tail you know the fish I caught was this big and it's five times the amount of what is actually happening in reality so um, it's very hard to perceive so it's really mm -hmm. looking at taking the comparison out whether it's online or just talking with friends and really just checking in with self to see what makes you happy yeah that's so important and when it comes to oral sex uh, I'm not sure about uh, how it is in Canada, but in Singapore, we don't uh, talk about oral sex uh, in the media. We're still quite conservative, and uh, the media even uh, uh, censors uh, anything that looks phallic. Trust me, even sex toys that looks phallic uh, aren't allowed to be featured. <laughs> so uh, much less uh, be able to talk about uh, oral sex, and of course, never ever uh, anal sex. <laughs> so uh, this is what I uh, deal with uh, here. Uh, so what what do you feel about the kind of messages around oral sex uh, in Canada? Um, I feel like we're probably not too far off from where you're at. <laughs> um, maybe maybe slightly less conservative. Um, I mean, we do have um, we're trying to get better sex education in schools, for instance, that address things like that. And there's lots of books out there and things like that to help with um, parents to talk with their kids about these sorts of things. But as far as mass media um, and the everyday public on TV, yeah, I think sex is thrown as an undercurrent 
into most of those things, phallic or not. Um, but I definitely don't think we are anywhere near, you know, where Europe is as far as their sex education and fluency of it and acceptance of, you know, sex as the norm and comfortable with body image. And um, it's, we're definitely more conservative, I would say, than Europe, but maybe not quite to where Singapore is at the moment. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. And um, you guys, uh, you guys did a lot of research and uh, focus groups, and that's really a lot of dedication and uh, work that you've put into the book. Like you mentioned, it took four or five years. So I'm curious, what's what's next for you guys? Hmm. Yeah, we were thinking of writing an accompaniment of this book. So this book is obviously called Heads Up mm -hmm. um, and as a play on words. And then we thought maybe we'd write a second edition and call it Heads Down and it would be on cunnilingus. So that would be on giving oral sex to uh, um, someone with a vagina or a female bodied um, individual. So that might be the second part and then we can sell it as a combo so you can buy it and say, you know, I'll read this one and you know, you can give the other one to your partner and say, you read this one. Um, but at the moment, it is not on the top to-do list. We're focusing a lot of our efforts on um, the Westland Academy of Clinical Sex Therapy, which would be a training program for those um, interested in going into sex therapy or learning more about sex education in general, um, and it would be online. So we're really um, kind of making that a top of our list at the moment to get that up and running. Mm, yeah, sounds great. And uh, you guys looking to get it um, ASAC approved? Yes, um, eventually we will go through all of the hoops and jumps that need to be done so that people can get um, continuing education credits um, for taking the program. Um, we won't be um, governing body of certifying anyone as a sex therapist. It would be more so that you completed this program and get probably a completion certificate. But again, we're in the beta stages of the program right now. It's not being launched and won't in 2016, so looking to the next year for this. So a lot of things still need to be figured out. But um, if anyone's interested in signing up for the program, Program, um, they can go to our website, which is the Westland, Aca Westland Academy of Clinical Sex Therapy, um, or just westlandacademy.com, and it will come up. Yeah, mm. fantastic. Okay, so we have a short break, and we'll talk more about uh, more beyond the blowjob after this break. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, mediumship messages and musings explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day -day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey ladies, do you want to have that good hair day feeling all the time? Gentlemen, would you want your special someone to have that glow letting you know she's feeling completely satisfied? This feeling and that glow can be yours by embracing your sexual power. So join me, Rachel Kenley, award-winning romance author on The O-Spot. The O-Spot will guide you to that peak with guest interviews, book discussions, and conversations on the thrills of sexual empowerment. Put the zing back in your life. Come up and see me sometime on the O Spot, live on Hump Day at 10 p.m. Eastern. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Spiritual, metaphysical, green living, psychic, alternative healing, life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? 
If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. Conscious Gate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatePR.com. Conscious Marketing for Conscious Minds. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Eros, Co- er- Eros Evolution. This is where sex and spirit meets. In um, uh, every show, I ask about the link between sex and spirit, or sexuality and spirituality. So, uh, Tisha, we, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your opinion about, um, about that? And uh, maybe even how all of sex is uh, spiritual. Uh, um, yeah. Is, is that possible? <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely think anything's possible for sure. I feel like if people are spiritual, if a person is spiritual in nature, whether that be a man-made kind of uh, religious aspect to it or more agnostic, um, I feel like they can bring spirituality into their bedroom and their intimacy if that's what they so desire. Um, so definitely possible, whether it's through oral sex or some form of other penetrative sex, um, as long as their par- partner is open to it. And I think it can go along the lines of tantric as well. I also think power play can be brought into that as well with the spirituality component, um, as well as multi-orgasmic or holding off on orgasms. Um, and a lot of people use um, semen as far as you know the exchange of semen or viewing semen as power or the taking of power or energy um, or bringing them to a higher place. Um, um, it's also been shown that semen can somewhat act as an antidepressant when it's um, ingested vaginally. So um, ingested or I guess inserted vaginally. Um, so I guess a long-winded answer short, uh, yes, spirituality can come into sexuality in many capacities. Mm, that's great. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your opinion on that. Um, some some people say it's uh, one and the same. Uh, uh, I, I guess it's a little bit like how uh, water comes in different forms, and uh, we come from we come from sex and we are spirit. So to them, it's just a different quality um, of it. Yeah. So so I I appreciate what you're sharing, and uh, um, I've had guests who. Uh, have been on the show talking about tantra and power play, so it's good to to uh, hear that uh, you are okay with uh, uh, sharing that uh, people can also explore these for themselves. <laughs> mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah. So I'm Ritisha Morgan, and she's a clinical counselor, sex therapist, and co-founder of the Westland Academy of Clinical Sex Therapy, and she has a full-time practice in Vancouver, Canada. So she does work with individuals and couples of all ages, genders, and sexual orientations to help them and uh, explore this uh, uh, thing that, uh, this crazy thing that we call sex. And so um, be sure to check out her website, that's tishamorgan.com, and her book, hitsupbook.com, and uh, this new institute that she's creating called the westlandacademy.com, where uh, people will be able to go there and learn uh, more about sex therapy. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, this uh, theory that you have in your book called the Giving, Receiving, Allowing, Taking Theory. And uh, I, I, I believe that this will really help um, listeners be able to better understand how this relates to uh, more sexual pleasure in their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a a good question. So with Give, Take, Allow, Receive, it was um, eventually, or it was originally designed, as far as I know, um, by Kai um, here in Vancouver. That's the person who introduced me to it anyway. And um, basically the theory is that there's uh, four quadrants or four sexual schemas. Um, And when I say sexual schema, I mean a way that somebody um, gets the most pleasure out of sex, um, enjoyment out of sex, which really turns them on. Now, it's called give, take, allow, and receive. So if you're picturing these four in a quadrant, like a square box, for instance, Mm -hmm. um, now, they say you can move to any one of these four quadrants and might do so in any one sexual encounter even, but most people lie in one of these boxes or quadrants more so than the others. That's where they get the most pleasure. So for instance, 
let's say a man is a giver by nature. That is his uh, sexual schema. So I'm going to use a heteronormative example here. Let's say he is with a woman who is a receiver by nature. Now, if he's a giver by nature, he would get the most sexual pleasure and stimulation out of giving pleasure to his partner and watching his partner absorb and receive that pleasure because he's a giver. Now, if he's going down on this woman, let's say he's giving her oral sex and she's a receiver by nature, so she would get the most sexual pleasure out of receiving pleasure from a partner. So if he's going down on her and she's being very flamboyant over how much she's enjoying this, she's throwing pillows, she's having multiple orgasms, she's very much enjoying this process. Now, they go together like a puzzle piece. They fit very well. Um, they're both enjoying the process. Now, regardless if he has an erection, regardless if they have penetrative sex, regardless um, if he has an orgasm, he's going to view this sexual encounter as something very wonderful, as is she. Now, let's say we take this woman out and we replace her with somebody different. Let's say somebody who is also a giver by nature. Then, um, no matter how amazing he is at his techniques, that partner may be lying there going, oh gosh, how long has he been down there? I wish he just finished already. You know, oh, did I remember to call my sister? Do I look fat in this light? Whatever the thoughts may be, because they're not a receiver by nature. So it feels hard for them to really get into that category. So now that person who's also a giver might say, you know what? I just want to switch things up. I just want to, you know, do something different because I'm a giver. So now that person starts going down on him and tries to give him oral sex. Now, because he's a giver by nature, he might be uncomfortable or not fully into that moment. So he may be sitting there going, oh gosh, I hope I don't lose my erection. Oh gosh, I hope I don't lose my erection. Um, because he's not really comfortable in that role. It's not really turning him on. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not necessarily how amazing that person is with their techniques around oral sex, but the fact of what they embody or the role that they embody in that moment that really does it for them. So when we're looking at anything from erectile dysfunction, um, let's say somebody who has problems getting erection keeping erection, um, ejaculating too soon, not ejaculating at all, um, and we're looking at oral sex, we can say, okay, is there any components here where either maybe you have trouble getting an erection, or maybe you keep an erection, but you're really not in full enjoyment of receiving an oral sex? Um, what's really going on there? Is there a difference in sexual schemas that we really need to address and talk about? And no one schema is right and no one is wrong. They're all equal. Um, but sometimes when we're with partners, we don't have good sexual chemistry or we're feeling a block or we're just not clicking. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's because that we're not really fulfilling our sexual schemas or we're not in complementary schemas. So when we're looking at oral sex, it's not just looking at the tips and techniques that surround do A, B, and C and you will be amazing in bed. It's really, again, taking time to look at self and say, what pleasures me? Where do I, what role do I like to embody most often? What really turns me on? What, where do my fantasy life go? And then seeing, can we bring that into the bedroom with your partner, whether it's through oral sex um, or not, to really enheighten the experience for both people? Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing this. I, um, I, I'm, uh, you mentioned these schemas, and I'm thinking of uh, this is just who we are, just the way we're wired just like how there are people who are introverts and extroverts and um, what uh, what rocks someone's uh, boat is different from the other person. And so it's so important to recognize that it is not about uh, whether it's right or wrong, like you mentioned, and it's just about acknowledging the differences that we have. And uh, one thing I want to uh, point out is how uh, in, in my work as a sexologist working with clients, I often see... Uh, couples uh, pointing fingers at each other and say, uh, saying things like, oh, you know, uh, you're, you're weird because you're like that, or you're wrong because uh, you're, diff you're, you're not doing it the way I do it. And it's so important for us to realize that um, it's, it's really because we're using ourselves as a ben benchmark of what is normal and uh, making other people wrong because they are different from us so important to appreciate all these differences that we have. Oh yes, you make a very, very important part or point. So it's not about the blame, it's not about the shame because someone is different from us. And there really is no normal. I really dislike the word normal and I always use air quotes when I say it. Because yes. um, really, I mean, what's 
what's normal for the spider is chaos for the fly. <laughs> so it's, it's really looking at the, you know, the dimensions of what feels good for us and how to communicate that effectively without making someone feel bad about themselves, whether we're looking at intimacy or not, um, that really stokes connection and appreciation and authenticity and vulnerability. And that's the important part. That is such an important piece that you're bringing today to the show uh, about communication. And uh, so you, you mentioned uh, giving and receiving. How, how about allowing and taking? Yeah, so allowing and taking, for instance, um, allowing would be a very um, passive role. Um, so it would be almost like the giving of your body for your partner's pleasure. So you get enjoyment or sexual stimulation by um, giving of self or allowing your partner to use your body in ways that they find pleasurable or turns them on. Um, and a taking can be very much more in the driver's seat role. Um, and I don't want to say aggression in like a, in a raw, um, angry kind of way, but just more... Um, um, directive, let's say, and it could be a taking of pleasure for your own pleasure or a taking of pleasure of your partner's pleasure. Um, and again, it's more of the of, of the director of things. Mm. So uh, between the four, the, some of them look very, very similar, but there's distinctions between the two, like a receiving and an allowing. There is a distinction, even though they're both more of a passive role. Mm, yeah, I definitely think I'm uh, 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 both uh, uh, at times, depending on who I'm with, I'm both allowing and passive and uh, more uh, taking at times. I'm very much a kinesthetic and attached person. So when I'm not, uh, I'm in a relationship with someone who is not very responsive when it comes to physical affection, I, I go and I ask for a hug and uh, that's part of the taking because, you know, that makes me feel loved and connected with my partner. So the taking can be in the form of uh, needing connection and um, missing their partner. So taking can, can uh, is uh, not what people think it is. Like you mentioned, it's not really about aggression. It's, uh, it's actually a, a, a form of self-care, uh, I, I feel. A hundred percent. That's a good example you use with the hugging, like a uh, uh, getting of that need met through asking and reaching out versus actually physically taking something from someone. Yeah. yeah. And and the allowing is uh, is beautiful because that's also part of the pleasure that someone wants to give you, and you just you're just uh, receiving. And uh, so we have uh, we have a break, and uh, we'll come back and uh, talk more with Tisha Morgan after this. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Are you wondering what is really going on behind the news? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pasqual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share on the Air Radio for thought provoking views behind the news, Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us on shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Check it out. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix, Mediumship Messages and Musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day -day life. Join your hosts on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. 
Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. This is where sex and spirit meets. And today we are talking about more than the blowjob. We're talking about hits up beyond the blowjob. And this is the same title of Tisha Morgan's new book. She co-authored this together with Constance Lynn Hamill. And uh, both of them are co-founders of the Westland Academy of Clinical Sex Therapy. And you can uh, find them at the westlandacademy.com. Uh, that's the new uh, institute that they're creating for sex therapy. And you can find Tisha Morgan at tishamorgan.com and the book hitsupbook.com. And uh, we can, um, we here talking about the, the giving, receiving, allowing, taking theory just now. And we also talked about the co- social comparison theory uh, today so far. And uh, I, I want to ask you, Tisha, could you share with us very quickly some surefire ways to ignite new forms of pleasure? Just some very quick techniques since we're talking about blowjobs today. Uh, surely we can uh, share a little bit what uh, listeners can uh, begin practicing after they get off the show. Mm. Yes, that's it's a tricky one because you never really know where people's baseline is, right? So you can say, well, here's some surefire ways would be, you know, to get home and start experimenting with um, ice cubes, like hot and cold related things. Mm. You know, you get some other crushed cubes yeah. or ice cubes, you put them by your bed and then you use that in your mouth and through oral sex. And then you experiment with going warm. So getting like a hot peppermint tea or a warm peppermint tea, for instance, because peppermint gives a tingle. And you go between, you know, putting the peppermint tea in your mouth to the ice cubes and back and forth on the person's wow. body. But then some people will say, yeah, yeah, that's old news. I've been there, done that. Give me something I don't already know. So you never really know where people's um, baseline is. So in the book, we really try to give, you know, um, techniques under a heading. And then another chapter is kind of advanced techniques. So techniques just in general of the how-tos, the basic. And then the advanced could be anything from, you know, using um, specific vibrators and cock rings to um, things like marshmallows to, we call it the grapefruit. Um, We get a lot of good feedback over the grapefruit um, Mm -hmm. technique. So um, it's hard because, like I said, you don't know the baseline of what people have already done. But I think communication is really the underlying one that makes the vast difference in communicating or in making someone's sex life better. It's not necessarily whether you're using ice cubes or not. It's whether you're communicating effectively to say this feels good, faster, slower, I would like this um, sort of thing is what really what makes or breaks good intimacy and a a good oral sex experience. Mm, Beautiful. So I, I think we do get uh, caught up with all the techniques because that uh, comes out quite a lot in the magazines that we read and uh, flip through, even in the hair salon. And um, I, I often say it's less about what you do, it's more about the way you do it. It has so much to do with the attitude um, behind it. Mm-hmm. Attitude is a big one. So right in the beginning of our um, book, Um, we have a chapter that um, talks about uh, before your oral presentation, Outlook is Everything um, is the title of the chapter. And really what it is is looking at, like you said, um, it's all about the attitude. It's not necessarily about the technique that you have, um, and having mental, like giving that mentality of you know is to give is to get. So you're like you're getting pleasure out of it, and then looking at that shift of the power dynamics and all of those sorts of things are really what can make or break good oral sex versus the actual technique of it is how you're broaching it. Yeah, precisely. Uh, I think if we have any discomfort or distaste or dislike or hate when it comes to giving uh, oral sex. Uh, surely your partner will be able to pick it up and uh, it really ruins the fun. There's really no point in doing it uh, and uh, uh, maybe you do it begrudgingly uh, but I, I, I certainly believe that your partner is not going to ask for it a second time. 
So, so yes, attitude is so important. And um, yes, so if you are interested to learn about the uh, grapefruit techniques and uh, much, much more that uh, Morgan is, uh, shares in her book, so be sure hits up book.com. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, communication techniques um, since uh, we are talking about the importance of communication as well and um, some of the things that you mentioned just now includes giving uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate a little bit about it? Yeah, I think when we talk about feedback um, with partners, it's very important to look at how we're communicating things so that it doesn't come across as um, blaming or shaming um, our partner. So making sure we're using I statements, we're using I statements with an I feel, um, and we're talking about our feelings, not what we're projecting onto a partner, what we think they're thinking or feeling um, with regards to what we would like more of, less of, um, or how we feel about the interaction is a big part of it. Um, because anytime um, a blame and shame comes into the picture, um, shame usually only has one of two outcomes. It's either a fight or a flight. So a fight would be our partner um, gets their guard up and becomes defensive and starts throwing blame and hurtful comments back at us. And, well, I wouldn't be doing that or I wouldn't have problems with my erections if you were better at this or if you initiated more or those sorts of things. And now that's not a game or not a good game to get into. Or um, flight. And the flight component of it is they recluse. So they shut down completely, they stonewall, they stop talking, they don't want to communicate, um, they want to just run and hide and, and um, not continue talking about the topic. So either one of those categories do not have positive results. Um, so we really need to make sure that we're choosing our words wisely. I often say is it would be wonderful if everyone was comfortable going to a sex therapist because a third party can really help with um, getting these um, uh, conversations going in a very effective way um, through communication exercises so that it doesn't hit on any of these kind of things. So yeah, I think the way we say things is very important using clear language. Um, I also think, you know, striking when the iron is cold versus hot um, can be helpful. Mm -hmm. And looking at, I mean, we call it the sandwich technique, mm -hmm. but it's often where you start with something positive, um, insert something you want to see change or something negative, and then you end with something positive. Again, starting with feel statements, right? Um, so, for instance, I really love it when we, um, when you initiate sex, it makes me feel sexy and wanted and desired. Um, one thing I would love us to do more of is if we try to, um, you know, let's say have sex or oral sex in different places. So like, you know, if you wanted to initiate in the shower or the living room versus just the bedroom, um, that would make me feel even more desired because I feel like you just can't control yourself and you have to have me in the kitchen versus waiting till we go to bed at night. And I think that would really stimulate like my sexual juices and really get me going. So that would be an example of how to do the sandwich technique, starting with positive, inserting something you would like to see happen, and then ending again with something positive, um, and then striking again when the iron's cold rather versus in the moment when we may feel um, insecure or have negative emotions around something or feel bad about ourselves or a partner. So little tricks that you can kind of pepper in is, is helpful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That's quite a lot of uh, value that you're sharing with us today. Um, Recently, I, I went for a training and um, the sandwich approach was also uh, introduced and um, the, the instructor explained it as the, the bun with the meat in between and really we, we start off with the uh, soft approach and uh, we start off with compliments and praise and appreciation and then we get to the meaty part which is actually what we want to do, we want to just give it to our partners, but that's the meaty part of what we're really sharing, the real content there, and, and then um, more praise and appreciation and acknowledgement. So she, she talks about the meat as the real crux of what we really want to talk about. And mm -hmm. so that, that was interesting for me to hear it being explained in that way. Mm -hmm. It is, definitely. Whether it's a, you know, a hamburger or sandwich is the same, the exact same thing, starting with soft getting down to the meat and then, you know, ending with something soft can make a big difference in our approach. Mm, nice. Yeah, soft, meat, and then soft again. So thank you so much, so, so much. You, you, you covered so many things in so short a time. I'm just so impressed by how much value you're giving us uh, today on, on this show and uh, also how articulate you are. 
and I just goes to show that you you really know what you're talking about, and that's why it's coming out so um, oh. seemingly seemingly effortless. And well, thank you very much. That is a very wonderful compliment, and compliments will get you everywhere. It is true. And uh, you, you've given us so much value in today's show. I'm going to uh, share it with everybody on uh, social media. And uh, uh, I'd love to have you uh, come back again at some point. So we'll, we'll talk more about that later offline. Okay. So any last uh, shout out that you want to uh, give to listeners uh, anything that I didn't mention so far? Uh, no, I think you answer, you asked very good insightful questions with regards to the book. Um, you, like you already mentioned, if anyone wants to grab a copy, they can just go to headsupbook.com and it'll, it'll be there. Um, and if someone is living in or around the Vancouver area and wants to come see me directly for individual or couples counseling, um, they can go to my website at tishamorgan.com and Tisha is spelled T-E-E-S-H-A. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, we can have a session or two and, uh, progress from there. So I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, I quite enjoyed myself. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and, uh, I'll just last question. Do you do Skype sessions as well? Um, I do do Skype and phone sessions, um, but they're more so the rarity, so I only do a specific percentage of my um, clientele that way. I'm currently full at the moment, but if someone wants to get on a wait list to be a Skype or phone um, client in the future, then that is definitely possible. Um, my office line to call um, is 778-838-9624, and um, my secretary does all the bookings, and they can definitely get on a wait list. Thank you so much. And next week, we are going to be talking about dating yourself with uh, Tamara. And uh, she's from Law Getting Naked. And tune in to Arrow's Evolution next week. And have a good week.